Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to talk about Ultimate Team today, but I want to focus on Volta as well because we had some pitch notes that were dropped yesterday in FIFA Ultimate Team about Foot 21 or FIFA 21 and a Volta football deep dive. A lot of information on this Volta mode, which I, I just tried to go in, by the way, and it says I can't. Did they shut it down on FIFA 20? Because nobody's playing this mode. Because I can still go into Ultimate Team, but I can't even get into FIFA 20 Volta. Not that a lot of people played it this year, but some of the updates that they are making for FIFA 21 Volta look pretty good. And I want to talk about those in this video today because I feel like it's not getting enough love on uh, any platform at the moment. Because Volta last year, we were hyped about it. FIFA Street was coming back. Uh, and, you know, they kind of just had a letdown with how it went and how it was kind of presented. All the things they could have done and a lot of that stuff that we wanted last year looks like it's getting added this year so i'm going to talk through some of these things and i'm actually kind of excited for this boys i know like not very many people at all played volta this year in fiva 20 but fiva 21 volta with some of the additions that they put in there playing with your friends um and you know like there's divisions a lot more of like the pay to skin type of model um this could be pretty fun, and I feel like this is going to have a lot bigger of an impact and have a lot more hype in FIFA 21. So let's talk through some of the main points in the deep dive from today. Now, this is a pretty long article. I'll put the link to this article in the description. I don't know if we're going to see an actual video on this um, or just these pitch notes, uh, but this is all about Volta today. Uh, five aside playing. I think there's even like three on three and four on four options as well, possibly in other different modes. Uh, so a lot of things they talked about in this article was gameplay. They talked about Volta squads, featured battles, and the debut. So we're going to talk about all through four of those major points and then talk about kind of like the pay to skin type stuff that went on as well. I don't want to spend too much time on gameplay, but they did make some improvements to gameplay. This is the biggest thing, right? I remember from the small amount of Volta that I played last year and, you know, some of the feedback that I got from a lot of other people who, you know, messed around in Volta a little bit was that the skill moves and that the flair stuff, uh, there were people that, there were the players would do skill moves without you even asking them to do skill moves. Like you would do a ball roll and it would do a sort of like a hocus pocus or something crazy, right? I think from what they're saying, uh, that might not be the same this year. And if you look at some of these, they have these pictures. They also have some like uh, action, some gifts or like short videos uh, as a part of the gameplay in here. And it looks like, it looks a lot more realistic than Volta was last year because Volta in, in FIFA 21, if you played at all, was just so skill like so much skilling that you, know, you weren't even intending for your player to do, and it was almost like kind of fake. And hopefully they they'll be able to maintain a balance between, you know, very easily chained skill moves like feeling good on the ball, quick, fast movement, um, and stuff like that, and also just making it a, a tad bit more realistic, right? And not just a crazy skill move show and, you know, poke the ball one way and, and expect your player to do five different skill moves with you making a simple press the button. Uh, so that was like the biggest complaint I think people had from FIFA 20. But they did add a couple things that are actually inside of Ultimate Team. Uh, they added the close dribbling, which is I think what they talked about here. Um, you know, you have some... Um, that's actually a skill move, but here it is. Agile dribbling. You can use R1, RB, and move the left stick to do some agile dribbling in Volta, so that's nice. Uh, there's a specific command for nutmegs, which is kind of cool. R L1, R1, and flick the right stick where you want the ball to go. That's actually kind of cool. Just It's a little small thing, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, they improved the shooting, which is a GG, and then they also improved some of the defending um, for some of those uh, shots to kind of combat that as well. So hopefully that has a nice balance to it. Uh, and then, of course, they mess with the AI a little bit. Uh, and if you just watch some of these right here, like, this looks to be pretty clean. Like, this gameplay right here looks a lot cleaner, in my opinion, from what the older Volta was. Because la in FIFA 20's Volta, like, that skill move right there was, like, a nice, saucy skill move. Perfect, right? Good build-up play. You could have thrown in some more skill moves if you wanted to. Uh, but I just, I just like how this looks. I think this looks really clean. It's not too much. So, uh, this, the gameplay and how it looks... Compared with all the other changes that are coming from down below in the article, um, I'm actually a little bit excited to play Volta Man. I really am. And this is why. Volta Squads. When this came out last year, everybody was wanted to know, can I play with my friends? Now, in Volta last year, FIFA 20, you were not able to do that. FIFA 21, you're going to be able to play online 
together. And I'm going to say this up front and I'm going to say this and be very, very honest with you guys. In my opinion, this is going to become the new pro clubs with the lack of updates that pro clubs had this year. Basically, all you can do is fine tune your AI and you can like change their name and change some of the tactics that your, your AI players will have in pro clubs. I think this might become more popular uh, than pro clubs for some people in FIFA 21. Now, I know pro clubs is like proper 11 on 11 and then has some, you know, fun parts to that. Just getting 11 guys on one side, but 5v5 Volta squads, this has more of a fun factor to it. Now that you're able to play online together, uh, whether it's drop in matches or whether it's squatting up with friends or playing solo, this right here is really going to make a change for Volta and I think make it a lot more popular. So again, just to kind of talk you guys through this, what does it mean playing on line? It's very, it's actually very similar to pro clubs. In pro clubs, you can do a community drop in match. You can drop into a public lobby with your Volta created avatar. So that this almost kind of is like, like an NBA, my park, if you play 2k sort of vibe to me, or just kind of like the pro clubs drop in matches, um, goes through some of the stuff that happens in there. It's basically a normal pro clubs drop in match is what it is. Squad up with friends. This is the big one. You can team up with up to three of your friends, test your skills against other teams online, start a private lobby and invite players from your friends list to form a team with the private lobby host acting as captain and stuff like that. So again, the ability to play with friends is massive. You can also play solo if you just want to rank up your guy, which we'll talk about in a little bit as well. Uh, uh, you can play solo and I guess you have full control over your AI teammates as well. You can play online as, um, you know, a solo, the solo actual person in your team with AI teammates. So that's an option as well. So this is the big thing, right? If you can play with your friends, if there's online gameplay, what is there to play for? And it is divisions and ranks. You can earn rewards. Those are, there's multiple divisions to progress through Volta squads and progress as tied to an individual avatar. Everyone starts with placement matches that determine their appropriate division. So it's probably, in my guess, maybe it'll be like a division five through division one. Maybe it'll be division 10 through division one, sort of like division rivals. Uh, each each uh, division has an MMR range calculated with match history. Movement through divisions is determined with an increase in wins and losses in a player's match history, also indicated in the squad progress panel. So it's just, again, kind of like the old classic FIFA divisions or like in pro clubs at the start of a new division player will be promoted or relegated um, getting promoted into a new division unlocks an exclusive division reward including Volta coins and gear only available in Volta squads with division the intent is to match players of similar skill level to everyone having fun and fair matches GG's okay so this is my answer right here there are five ranks in each division five being the lowest one being the highest interesting so there's more than one division and there's more there's five different ranks inside of one division so you kind of move up the rank um and then you, per, players participate in weekly events to earn rank points for every win log win draw loss and then along the way players unlock unique limited time rank rewards got you so featured battles right so, so that's online play there's divisions basically you can move up the ranks you can get rewards and this is where like the pay to skin type stuff comes in right I don't think you're really going to upgrade your player that much. And maybe I'm wrong from that. Maybe I'll read a little bit down below. But a lot of this just talks about um, leveling up your leveling up through divisions so that you can get uh, Volta coins and gear. So maybe the Volta coins go towards upgrading your player. But uh, moving through this again, featured battles. This is basically like squad battles, I believe. Um, you'll play against uh, featured battle squads. Yeah, this looks a lot like squad battles. Uh, yeah, you can see you have matches remaining. Uh, you'll play against Icons, Mbappe, and other groundbreaking talent along the way. Um, if you're able to beat these star-studded squads before the weekly event ends, you can recruit players from their squad into yours. So that's actually pretty sick. Like their example here is Kaka. I'm assuming Kaka is going to be one of the highest level cards that you can unlock. You can unlock featured kits and attire through these featured battles, which is kind of nice as well. You see a Liverpool kit right there uh so it's kind of like the pay to skin type thing is what we're really seeing right here uh through the featured battles which are really it seems to me like squad battles from ultimate team now this is the debut i'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this because the debut is basically the story mode inside of volta and i'm pretty sure uh that it said somewhere i think i read another article where it's probably going to take you like uh just a couple hours so oh, it's right here in two to three hour cinematic experience 
players will discover new locations, grow their avatar, learn strategies, earn rewards, build their squad. So it's not a super duper long story mode. Obviously, you can tell that they're trying to keep you on the online sort of section with this Volta stuff. So they're kind of pushing you to the online, which is dope there. Five new locations. Some of these actually look really dope. That one right there looks sick. All of these, honestly, look really dope. Sao Paulo, Paris, Sydney, Dubai, and Milan. Uh, distinct level of football culture. Showcasing passionate atmospheres around the world. Now let's talk about this. Grow your avatar. Avatar will grow from playing matches, and the debut will have access to optional training drills that will provide additional growth opportunities. So reading that, if you want to have a like the highest level skill or the highest level Volta player that you can, you actually do need to play that debut mode, the story mode, so that you can get those training drills. And um, the drills have been curated to teach users the fundamental skills needed in Volta, how to perform skill moves, ball movements, okay, learn gameplay strategies, okay, and then earn more rewards. Player can, players can earn items to outkit their avatar as they progress through the debut, as well as high-skilled squad mates to strengthen their team for featured battles and Volta squad. So again, a lot of stuff you can see here, it's the pay to skin method, um, the pay to skin way. Rewards will be given for matches, completing skill games, chapters, and winning tournaments. There's some jackets, some sick looking pants. Look at those pants, bro. It's freaking dope. Back your squad, you can recruit high rated players to your squad. Lisa Zimuche and Kotaro Okuda. Now those names don't mean too much to me, but I'm sure to some of you guys they do. Uh, those who complete debut will be rewarded with a surprise and find themselves ready to compete at higher level in Volta squads. Wow. So they're actually wanting you to get that debut done. Interesting. Uh, and then gear up. Again, pay to skin, right? New gear releasing regularly. We're bringing football fashion together. Focusing on four key areas. Community connection to unlock authentic street culture gear. Um, cause related gear to support social topics intrinsically linked to football. Dope. Working with key talent to drive aesthetic direction of in-game assets. Adding a limited set of authentic gear for avatars in the club. So these are pretty sick, right? Volta-esque type uh, stuff like that. Uh, tattoos, footwear, hair, clothes. That's pretty dope. Now, one thing I did see some people ask was like, can you do a face scan? Like I know in like NBA 2K, you can actually take a picture of yourself and get your face scan in Volta. As of right now, I do believe that is not something that they're doing uh, with Volta. Um, but this partnership is pretty dope, right? Adidas gear, community gear. That's pretty sick. Club gear, progression. And now let's talk player growth. So we talked about pay to skin. So I guess there is some sort of player growth in here as well. Um, kind of like pro clubs, I guess, too. Your avatar will grow their attributes by playing and completing matches faster than the previous year. After every match, your avatar will earn a match rating. Your match rating can increase uh, based on successful in-game actions. Got you. And decrease based on unsuccessful in-game. Wow. So it can increase and decrease at the same time. That's pretty sick. A higher match rating will result in a faster growth of your avatar. Attributes will grow at different rates based on your position. Makes sense. There's also objectives uh, specifically curated to you. Reward mastery of the mode over time. Unlock time-sensitive challenges in our ladders. New arrivals as our persistent can be tackled by the player at their leisure. So again, here's some examples of objectives. So there's going to be objectives that you can complete as well to kind of build up your player. Team chemistry, uh, they didn't really spend much time talking about team chemistry. The Volta Stadium Hub, so you're basically going to be able to um, use the Stadium Hub to allow you, that's basically like the hub to access everything uh, quickly inside of Volta. So that's uh, kind of the way that I guess that they're spreading things out inside of Volta. This is how the home, sc the home screen will look right here. So again, biggest takeaways from this Volta article, right? The biggest takeaways are honestly Volta squads for me. Playing online together is freaking dope. Now, if you don't want to play online with your friends, you want to grind it and rank up, you can do that through featured battles in the debut. Um, and then uh, what was it? The limited time events with the objectives uh, and, and the player growth as well. So it seems like there's going to be a decent amount of stuff to do. Now, would it get a little bit old and a little bit stale? Maybe at some point if you just played Volta? Yeah, probably. Um, but I really just see this as another outlet instead of pro clubs where you can go and have fun, you can skill, and it's just really not as competitive, I guess. This doesn't really seem too competitive to me. Of course, you want to rank up the division and stuff like that, but I like the fact that it's not competitive. Big time fan of that. And then, of course, it looks like they've got some sweet collaborations going on with, with Adidas. 
uh, and some of the other gear stuff that they've got going on inside of Volta as well. So that's a lot about Volta. And I wanted to talk about that a lot today because that's big news. Like That is honestly big news that they're updating uh, a game like that in Volta. Um, a couple of questions I wanted to roll through on Twitter really fast before we talk about a couple things in Ultimate Team really fast. Um, they had a Q&A today on the Volta. Um, what do they say? How Can you import your avatar's base appearance? Um, Volta and Pro Clubs have separate vanity player progressions and tactics. Okay. You can import your avatar's base appearance into Pro Clubs or Career Mode. Okay, nice. Um, we focus on shooting improvements for modes and with and without goalkeepers. Okay, so this is not really Volta related. Can you name your Volta squad like a Pro Clubs team? Yes, every player you can name their own squad. Choose their own team crest and select home turf. When the teams team up, they will play under the captain's identity. The highest rating in Volta will be 93 rated. Icons and other unique players can be higher than that. So that's kind of similar to pro clubs as well, I think. Um, uh, why can only play up to three friends and not four? You can play with four friends in the same team. Up to four player controlled outfielders and one AI controlled goalkeeper for 5v5. Got you. Um, can we play with icons besides Kaka? We have an exciting lineup of icons to recruit to their squads. Okay, so um, Volta squad supports friend playing together in the same team. Yeah, so the only, maybe the only downside is you can't like invite uh, a set of friends. Like maybe you have a set of four friends and you want to play against another set of four friends. You can't play friends v friends or like, um, but basically like a co-op 2v2. 4v4 in Volta, it's basically just going to be an online division matches, but still that, that, that's, that's just like pro club. So I don't think that's, I don't think that's super duper duper crazy um, with that right there. So uh, some more interesting questions from the EA direct FIFA account today on Volta. And honestly, I'm a little bit stoked for it, man. I'm a little stoked because they made the online improvements that I think they needed to. I'm glad to see that from them. And hopefully that just brings more hype to that mode. Um, as we continue into Viva 21. And you know what? I honestly think it's going to take over Pro Clubs because of the lack of updates that Pro Clubs is getting. And I, th I think people want to play Volta, right? Because people love FIFA Street. Um, I just feel like there wasn't enough stuff in the game for them to want to actually go through with that. And now there actually is. So I feel like there's going to be some more desire to play Volta. Now, last thing I want to talk about is a little bit of stuff inside of Ultimate Team. We got a Team of the Week Moments SBC repeatable yesterday along with another 89 plus upgrade that is out for another day. Um, this team of the week upgrade, uh, you know what? I said yesterday in my video, it needed to be 81 or 82 rated. And you know, when I was saying that, I really needed to see an 81 or 82 plus team of the week card guaranteed from this pack. This team of the week upgrade has no rating requirement for what you will get out of the pack. So I saw so many people today getting 75, 78 rated informs. That's an L. This should be an 83 plus, honestly, inform team of the week upgrade and uh, at least have some sort of rating threshold to give you above that rating. So yes, they are supplying informs on the market now though. Uh, and that is a very easy SBC to grind. We got another 89 plus double uh, today, which honestly enough is kind of funny because they put out that team of the week SBC to supply team of the weeks on the market. And then they put out an SBC that doesn't even require informs or team of the seasons like the 86 player pick does. So uh, it is what it is, but we're continually getting this copy paste content from EA Sports, to be honest with you. We had a UCL halftime SBC today. Um, again, kind of an irrelevant SBC, if I'm being completely honest with you. And we did see some crazy UCL action with PSG coming back and winning. Uh, so our Marquinhos cards are going to get upgraded. Um, some people were watching Headliner Neymar because... They thought that Neymar would be like a maybe a man of the match from from that game. So I think headliner Neymar's card uh, was up a little bit in price. This guy was like 1.9 flat and now he's up a little bit. He was over 2 million coins at one point. Uh, I wouldn't mess around with that too much, to be honest with you. You know, one card that we've been watching is a live item. Marquinhos is wrote to the final more expensive than his team of the season. This card has since fallen back down after the game. He went from like 130,000 coins when PSG were losing 1-0. Uh, and he bounced back up to like one, uh, 165 to 170. Now he's back down to 136. This card is going to get upgraded probably in the next 24 to 36 hours. 
Um, still is pretty irrelevant to me because the team of the season is uh, higher rated still. In my opinion, it's a bit irrelevant. But as we saw that Martial was upgraded, I want to take a look at some of the cards that got upgraded tonight due to Europa League uh, teams moving through. Handanovic is now 95 rated and still has a price range of 100,000 coins. EA Sports, can we update some price ranges? Please, uh, we're begging you. So that was an upgrade that we had. Um, of course, Sarabia is going to get upgraded as well if you did that SBC. Uh, Martial went to a 92. Diego Carlos is now a 91. And Mason Greenwood is now a 95 rated card after the Europa League action. So again, I think it took about 24 hours for these cards, maybe actually 48 uh, hours to get these cards upgraded um actually yeah it's about 48 hours to get these upgraded today so i would expect another similar time frame on our upgrades for sarabia and for um and for marquinhos so if you have road to the final items again like i talked about that marquinhos if you sold marquinhos in the hype that was a gg of course the big big game is coming on friday and that is bayern uh versus barcelona we've been watching this Goretzka card very closely just to see what his price does. We've been watching Kings of Coman, Usman Dembele. And so far, these cards are still kind of in the same area. I would again expect these to start to trickle up. They actually have. This guy's up about 10,000 coins. Um, where is Usman Dembele? He was like 240 something. Uh, I guess he's still kind of in the same range. 240. So these, these cards might be starting to trickle up a little bit as we get towards the game later in the week. Uh, I think it just depends on which teams are expected to win and which teams are... Uh, you know, maybe the most hyped up. Again, this Coleman card looks pretty cracked now with 92 rated and still more upgrade possibilities ahead. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. If you do have the Jao Felix, which I have myself, um, the Jao Felix, they're playing against Leipzig. I think that game is today, if I'm um, thinking correctly. Let me check this really fast. Uh, yes, Leipzig and Atletico Madrid are today. So we are hoping the Jao Felix and Atletico Madrid can go through, get us a W, and make this card go to a 95 rated Jao Felix. That would be sick. So that's kind of what we have on the play today, as well as Thomas Party would be a live item. Uh, Leipzig doesn't really have any live items, do they? Uh, except for Konate, which was an SBC. I think that might be the only ones. Maybe I'm forgetting somebody. Uh, but I don't think that they have any other live items. So, But again, boys, kind of a long video today. If you enjoyed it, smash a thumbs up on it. If you're hyped for Volta, let me know what you think down in the comments. Talk to me, all right? Talk to me about Volta and what you're thinking is on those. And if you have any questions, of course, about Road to the Final stuff, drop those down below as well. Again, if you enjoy the videos, boys, again, drop a thumbs up, drop a sub to the channel as well, and I will catch you guys later. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace out.